All right, y'all, what is good, what is good? It is John G. John Grant uh, doing a little something different now. This is the Ride Home Podcast where I have gone to a film and on my long ass drive back home, uh, we kind of discuss the film and uh, I essentially give you guys my thoughts. Um, so the film today was uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And first off, before I even get to the movie, let me give you guys my little story of me going to this theater. So I just recently got, I mean, I see a ton of movies. I recently just got the AMC uh, stubs and, you know, the little pass for me to be able to go and see, you know, the three movies a week and everything, which which was cool. Cause you know, I, I, I already spent way too much money on films anyway. Um, and besides, I mean, before we get all into my story too, um, thanks for joining guys. Um, I appreciate you guys just putting me on the background. Like I said, this isn't a video. Uh, this is just going to be a little podcast, something new that I'm trying. And I hope you guys do enjoy it. You know, every time you go to a movie or something, you know, you always get that good little car ride talk or you have those thoughts after the movie. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm going off course. Um, so I got these tickets for the AM for AMC Stubs. I come, I show up to the theater and... Uh, I'm usually used to going to Cinemark Theater, so like Tinseltown's a big popular one I used to go to. I started recently going to the AMC theaters um, just because their Dolby Cinema, in my opinion, is the, the best theater experience uh, that, that I have out here in, uh, uh, in my uh, part of town. Um, so uh, the Luxury Loungers, Tinseltown has all of them. But yeah, that's what I was specifically, so I show up in the theater, I grab my ticket, I go in, and I am still flabbergasted that not all theaters have gone to the recliner luxury seats. So I go in here to watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And it wasn't like one of their back row theaters either. This was one of their like premiere, like, you know, like you go into the building, you know, the dude, you're like, I got this ticket right here. And he's like, okay, it's, it's the first, you know, it's the first room right to the left right here. So it's, it's one of their like main theaters in the movie theater. So it shocked me even more that when I got in this theater, it was fucking the old ass regular seats with the classic cup holders and stuff. Cause you know, I'm a tall dude. If you guys don't know this, I am a six, six, seven, six, eight kind of guy. So I am up there in height. So these, uh, these old theater methods, you know, the, the caveman ways of theaters, um, it's, it's just not happening. So. So I'm already, I'm already hot, right? I get in there, I'm already salty because I'm like, man, what's with these seats? <laughs> um, but now let's jump into this movie, guys. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. By the way, this is just going to be a discussion of the movie. So there are going to be spoilers. So you have been warned now. If you do not want to hear any spoilers from the film, uh, please put this podcast away. Save it uh, for, for a little bit uh, later next time. So um, my thoughts of the movie. I'm not going to give like a 1 out of 10 or 1 out of 5. Um, just because it, uh, I'm just, I'm just not going to do that. Um, but, uh, let's talk about some characters or overall, let's do overall. Um, sorry, sorry guys. I'm just freestyling it right now. I'm driving home and we just going to freestyle it, but you guys are in the ride. You guys are in the whip with me. So we going to experience this together. Overall, Quentin Tarantino did another solid job with uh, his, his, his movies, essentially. Was it my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie? It actually was not. Um, I wouldn't go out, go out and say that this was my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie of the bunch. Um, while I still enjoyed it, um, I, I did feel like uh, there were some parts, and uh, we might jump into gripes first. Uh, just overall, I want you guys to know I, I, I love this movie. Um, the adaptation that he brought of essentially rebuilding parts of Hollywood to bring them back into the 1960s, 19, you know, early 70s uh, for Quentin Tarantino to have so much detail with uh, having uh, like real life characters um, in the film. For instance, uh, Bruce Lee, they portrayed him. You guys saw that in the trailer. Of course, uh, Mr. Char Charles Manson and uh, his murder uh, fiasco that he was never found guilty on. Um, all these different things that uh, that he brought into the films. Uh, certain actresses and actors back in the 60s and the 70s that played uh, different roles. Um, 
So, I mean, just the detail and everything uh, was was great. Um, now, of course, with every movie, there are some little gripes. They weren't big gripes, uh, but we'll discuss them here. Uh, the Quentin Tarantino, at least in my opinion, and I want to I want to let you guys know that I am a huge Quentin Tarantino fan. He's actually one of my favorite directors. So before I go in to talking about my gripes of the movie, I am not a Quentin Tarantino hater at all. I love almost all of his films. I enjoy all of his films, and uh, he's one of he's one of my favorite directors next to you know Quentin Tarantino, Zack Snyder. J.J. Uh, Abrams, uh, Peter Jackson, uh, Steven Spielberg, you know, uh, Nolan North. I mean, all these guys, um, you know, he's he's up there in that echelon for me. Um, Kill Bill is arguably one of my favorite films of all time. I've watched it a hundred times. Um, but uh, Quentin Tarantino, at least in my perspective, from a couple of his movies, is he suffers from uh, a little bit on pacing, in my opinion, at least where he does have a few dry spots in the movie. This movie this movie was about a two, two hour, 40, 40 minute movie. And I can at least tell you guys that at least 20 minutes of this movie could have been shaved. Um, for instance, um, there were some parts where characters in the film were just driving. And when they were driving, there was like no dialogue at all. Um, and I get it, uh, you know, Quentin, they paid a lot of money to essentially show Hollywood how Hollywood was being shown. Uh, but um, there were certain parts of the film where it was literally just, I'm driving. And you know how in certain films where, you know, you see the character pull out of the driveway, he drives, and then it pans off into the city. And, and you can tell that the character is going somewhere. Um, Quentin Tarantino would have that. And then he would have another shot of a character drive of that same character driving for about a couple minutes, and then you would think it would go to the next scene, and then he'd have another couple minutes of the character driving. So I kind of felt like uh, about uh, which isn't which isn't a bad thing at all. It, it makes it more realistic. It, it it shows the journey and everything like that. But definitely there was about I, I would say eight to nine minutes, maybe ten minutes of just. Uh, just quiet driving scenes that could have been shaved out of the movie but i mean when you have to say that you know driving driving parts of the movie some of the driving scenes were too long it was a gripe then that means you made one hell of a movie so um i was i'm just essentially nitpicking there um and then i felt like there were a couple of, of parts that that did uh go feel a little bit slow uh, it wasn't bad it just uh there there was a few parts that i personally felt that went slow uh, so besides that, though, overall, the, the film was uh, fantastic. Um, Character-wise, we let's break down the characters. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio, of course, playing as uh, Rick Dalton. He did an amazing job. Um, overall, I mean, he, he freaking killed it. Uh, just his transition of being a, a actor who he felt like was a has-been and he didn't have the juice to him being able to find his old glory to his transitions and all his roles um i mean uh, of course leonardo DiCaprio. i mean i essentially i mean you know me saying leonardo dicaprio did a good job that's like you know saying you know uh you know grass is green or the sky is blue so we kind of expected that i'm gonna hit a little bit of this water real quick please forgive me ah. uh, so yeah leo did a great job um let's go over to uh brad pitt Brad Pitt, my man, Brad. He was actually, in my opinion, he was he was the shining character of the film. I really enjoyed Brad Pitt and his story. I felt like he had the most interesting story of all the characters. Um, and I mean, it's you know, you felt like you wanted to give it to Brad Pitt just because he was like the stunt man. He was the side guy. He was the he was the guy that did everything for Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, so there was just those times when you were like, man, Brad Pitt needs to get some saving grace here. Um, uh, as for Margaret Robbie, though, um, she really didn't do much in this film uh, besides looking gorgeous, um, as she always does in all her movies. She really, her story wasn't very amazing. It really didn't have such a really deep plot or anything. It was just... You know, she was just a, uh, a a very basic side role that really, if she wasn't in this film, it would the film really wouldn't have changed. 
um, in my opinion. Like, it really wouldn't have. Like, her story was very cast away to the side. So, um, which is sad because I like Margaret Robbie too, and I, uh, I love a lot of things that she's done, especially with Quentin Tarantino. Uh, but this one just, at least for me, felt uh, like it got casted by the wayside. I feel like uh, Quentin Tarantino really didn't maximize on, on Margaret Robbie, and it's unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, you guys let me know in the comments below if, if you uh, thought, uh, what you thought of Margaret Robbie's performance um, and what had it. So, um, overall, um, I would say cameo-wise, some of the big cameos, of course, were Bruce Lee. Uh, that was a very fun part. Uh, that was a great part. Uh, where, you know, Bruce Lee was talking shit about how he loves hand-to-hand -hand combat and Brad Pitt was just like, you know, you, you know, you're just a dancer. <laughs> um, and, uh, they, they kind of squabbled and, and they kind of, they went at it. So, uh, I thought that was, that was, that was one of my highlights of the movie. That was, that was a fun part. And then of course, uh, uh, Mr. Manson, Charles Manson and his whole, uh, family cult. Uh, that was another that was another good part too. I wish they would have delved deep a little bit more with the whole Charles Manson, but I understand why Quentin Tarantino didn't um, because Charles Manson, Bruce Lee, uh, they were all side stories. They were all kind of in the mix of the universe of uh, Rick Dalton and uh, Cliff Booth. So um, you know why he did kind of dip his toes into those stories. He didn't really have those stories overwhelmed. Uh, the main story, and it, and it shouldn't because the story is about, uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad, Brad Pitt's characters. Um, uh, some of my favorite, I mean, uh, the first act, I would say it was, it was really solid. Um, we were getting to learn Leonardo DiCaprio's character, what he was doing, um, as seeing Brad Pitt in the background, uh, being his stunt double. Um, the story was solid overall. Um, it wasn't, an, in my opinion, it wasn't like an amazing uh, storyline, um, but it just had so many topical and so many great hits. I'd say definitely, in my opinion, the biggest points of this movie were how accurate Quentin Tarantino was, um, how detailed he was as a director. I mean, some of the things he did were just so amazing from filming on those old panoramic cameras uh, for parts of the movie, um, reenacting a lot of those old 1960 movies um, to even like the, the specific shots that uh, like Leonardo DiCaprio, or not Leonardo, but Quentin Tarantino doesn't really do a lot of those certain shots, but they are very prominent in the 1960s of filming. So he, he even had a, uh, even the way he filmed those shots made, really made it feel like it was back in the, the, uh, the, the 1960s. Um, and it was, uh, I mean, some of like the uh, art styles that they did, like they had classic like Western arts of Leonardo DiCaprio and stuff like that. I mean, they just, uh, even a Margaret Robbie in there. So they, they just had uh, definitely how specific and topical it was, was definitely amazing. So I give them their kudos there. Uh, but story-wise, I said the story was, uh, it was solid, it was okay. Um, I didn't think it was an amazing story from Quentin Tarantino, um, especially from his caliber. Um, and you know, I'm gonna be a little bit tougher on Quentin Tarantino because he is one of my favorite directors and I am a huge fan of his. Um, so I'm definitely gonna say that. Uh, but yeah, um, they had some great parts in this movie uh, from, of course, the last uh, 20 minutes. I mean, let's dive into the, the end. The last 20 minutes were ridiculous. Uh, there was, I mean, you were waiting the whole film because the whole film was, it was very uh, like classic, you know, Hollywood, you know, they were doing their acting stuff. There's a little bit of drama on the side, but you were really waiting for that classic Quentin Tarantino moment, like the blood, the pandemonium, the madness. And we finally got that in the last 20 minutes of that film uh, where Tex and uh, some of the hippie girls, don't remember their names, they showed up um, and originally they were supposed to go and kill, um, you know, Margaret Robbie and that director, I, I, his name, uh, uh, his name leaves me. 
I don't remember his name, but essentially Margaret Robbie's character and their, their family and friends that were there, they were supposed to go up there and, and murder all of them, um, which I was interested in. Um, you guys post down in the comments below, because when Charles Manson first showed up with, when he was in the ice cream truck or whatever, and he essentially uh, went to that house, he talked to that guy, and then he looked and he saw Margaret Robbie's character. Um, what do you guys think, uh, Charles Manson? I mean, was he trying to, uh, you know, essentially bring Margaret Robbie over to his Manson family or uh, what he was partaking in? But uh, you guys posted the comments below what you, what you guys thought or if it was explained or if I just missed it, uh, why Manson kind of showed up to the house. Because I know he thought somebody else lived there. Um, and then he realized, and I don't know if he was just using that as a facade, um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was an interesting, that was definitely an interesting part, but, uh, oh yeah, the crazy, I mean, Brad Pitt was such a beast at the end of this movie, I mean, well, throughout the whole movie, he was a G, not only did he throw Bruce Lee into a, uh, a car, like a boss, but, um, he also, which, it was kind of weird, because it's like, when they, they did the whole fighting, you know, the whole uh, scrimmage, would Bruce Lee really be that dumb to really do another flying dragon kick again at, you know, the guy after the guy told him, you should try that move again, you know what I mean? That was kind of weird. Like, you would think Bruce Lee really wouldn't do the exact same move again, but, you know, that's, that's in the specifics. But, um, yeah, the last 20 minutes, uh, the murderers, uh, originally they were supposed to go to Margaret Robbie's character's uh, place, and murder all of them. Instead, they run into Leonardo DiCaprio, who does a fantastic job telling those hippies to get off his lawn, get out of his street. And then they rethink their plan, and they're like, hey, is that Cliff Booth? And they're like, yeah. And uh, they're like, hey, we should go murder the guy that's taught us how to murder all these years. So they end up going to uh, DiCaprio's house instead. And that's when all the pandemonium happens. Um, First off, the, the dog and, and Brad Pitt with their love connection uh, was, was such a great job. I actually thought, I thought Leonardo DiCaprio was actually gonna uh, end up smoking the, uh, the cigarette laced with acid. Uh, I just kind of had that feeling. And, and, Quentin Tar and give it to Quentin Tarantino, he did a great job of trying to misdirect the, uh, the audience into thinking that because he just threw it in there and you know, you're kind of thinking, oh, he might, Leonardo DiCaprio might end up smoking this, but uh, Brad Pitt gets back to it, and uh, he, he ends up uh, indulging, being high on acid while being in a crazy murderous fight, um, smashing that girl's head on the, the freaking fireplace was ridiculous, I mean, oh my gosh, that was so crazy. Um, just the whole madness that happened. That that girl that ended up leaving because uh, when they there was four of them originally, and she was like, "Oh my God, I forgot my knife!" And they were like, "Well, go back and get it." And she's like, "Okay." And she goes back and gets it, and she actually takes off in the car. Uh, she made a wise decision that night. She definitely made a wise decision that night because nobody was fucking with Brad Pitt. My man Cliff Booth was a goddamn boss, murking everybody. Um, so, uh, forgive me if you guys hear that in the background. It's just me driving, having to stop and start because tra traffic's a, a little weird right now. But, um, but yeah, uh, the last 20 minutes was insane. That classic Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, overall, I did enjoy it. I thought there were some slow parts, but I still enjoyed the movie overall. Quentin Tarantino still did a great job. Um, this movie still has is is a movie that's going to have legs, of course. Uh, it's going to be a good watchable movie multiple times, actually. Just how actor, accurate the history uh, was in these characters and, and even doing more history on some of these actors and actresses um, uh, will definitely uh, make the movie fun to watch, uh, again, in my opinion. Um, but I want you guys to let me know what did you think of this film. Let me know what you thought of DiCaprio. Let me know what you thought of Brad Pitt. Uh, let me know if you thought Margaret Robbie... I did a great job in this film, or if Quentin Tarantino kinda uh, didn't maximize her, her potential personally, I feel like he didn't, unfortunately. Um, but, I mean, I know, uh, you know, that's why film's amazing, because it's all subjective and we all have our opinions. So post down in the comments below if you guys disagree with me. Uh, let's, let's chat this up, let's discuss this. And hey, 
Um, I make all kinds of videos all the time. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, um, I do all kinds of reaction videos on film, uh, vlog videos, different kinds of stuff. Uh, I would be honored if you guys hit that sub button, hit that bell uh, to watch my reactions and to watch my videos and to check out more of these podcasts. This is the Ride Home Podcast. Um, so I'm now making it home. I'm pulling in uh, at, at, at my drive through now. So um, thanks for listening, you guys. Um, enjoy the rest of your days. Uh, keep the film fandom alive. And hey, take care, guys. Have a good one.